So today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, Patrick is looking at the comments and we're just going to roll through and I'm going to get a rapid fire and see what kind of answers <laughs> yeah. I give. Hello, Wellness Warriors. Welcome to Mind-Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, Pat Chat Edition. I'm Violet. And I'm Pat. And so here we go. Here we go. First one. Okay, so if hormones are making you hungry, we know that, like insulin. And the answer is not to eat. How do, how do you endure the firestorm of emotions when you... Oh, that, you're going to like this one. How do you endure the firestorm of emotions when you are starving yourself by intermittent fasting? Okay, so first so. of all, you should not be starving okay. yourself by intermittent fasting. I'm not sure if, like, how many of you guys have ever watched Dr. Berg's videos on how to get to one meal a day, but he, he explains it beautifully. Basically, the idea is eat normally when you first start keto and then pay attention. I say it all the time eat to satiation and so if you're eating to satiation what should happen is that at some point you're going to get up in the morning and realize i'm not hungry mm -hmm. and so the second principle that dr westman talks about a lot is only eat when you're hungry so we've got violet telling you eat to satiation you've got dr westman telling you eat to only eat when you're hungry you've got dr berg saying that you should only eat when you're hungry do you think maybe we should only eat when we're yeah, hungry? Yeah, right? So I feel like every doctor is telling us the same thing. Eat when you're hungry. Now, why is that important? Because exactly what you're yeah. talking about is that if I start eating when I'm hungry, that means I'm not eating when I'm not hungry. hungry. It breaks this habit that we have yeah. of eating 24-7. Mm -hmm. So if I'm actually following my body, what's going to happen is I'm going to only have breakfast later and later and later. And at some point, I'm going to push breakfast back so far, it won't make sense to have breakfast. So I'll just have lunch or have breakfast for lunch or mm -hmm. whatever. It'll but I'll have that meal. Thing, yeah. And then my next meal will be my last meal of the day. And depending on who you are, you might end up pushing lunch back, which is what happened to me further and further and further until, well, now it doesn't make sense to have lunch. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the position of one meal a day. This is not a goal. It's a possibility, yeah. right? So if you're hungry, you eat. Like you, you're not like, don't make it a goal. The other thing is interesting with that comments is related to hormones. When whenever you switch to a keto lifestyle, your your energy is coming from fat more than carbs, like instead of carbs even. So so by not triggering your insulin, you're not triggering your hunger, your hunger, your hunger hormones or the ghrelin. So you're not like like everything is like at lower levels. So you won't be feeling hungry as often. So looks like a little bit like a, a, a chore there is going to happen naturally. I'm going to add to that because I kind of know what he's talking about there when he says that firestorm of emotions that's uh, going to trigger. He's oh, yeah, talking about it. cortisol. And here's the other thing is that that firestorm of emotions is happening because I'm hungry and I'm not feeding you're, myself you're and then I'm upset. Hmm. So I'm putting stress on my body. If I naturally got into hmm. a 12 hour fast, 16 hour fast, if it happened naturally because I just wasn't hungry, there isn't a firestorm of emotions happening, right? I'm just naturally not hungry yet. So this for clarity, like on the weekends, especially I notice this on the weekends, I could get up and go sometimes till four o'clock without having anything, right? Like my coffee, I'm even talking about my coffee, like not even drinking anything. Why? Because I'm not actually hungry. I make it a point that I only have whatever I'm gonna have when I feel hungry. So my first coffee happens when I'm hungry. It's not a habit of having a coffee in the morning, which a lot of people do, right? So even that, something like that of breaking bad habits mm -hmm. of saying, oh, it's such and such a time I'm supposed to have this, what could also help in that situation. So you don't force yourself to attain that. And we have, uh, we have a, nice, uh, a nice video uh, we did in the past about listening to your body. I think it's really interesting when trying, uh, thinking about thinking, uh, thinking it up. Uh, so you don't push it, you don't make it, you don't make it the goal. You eat when you're hungry, you stop when you're satiated, and it's, all of this is gonna happen naturally. Nobody on keto is forcing themselves to one meal a day. We have a, a, a lot of questions from from viewers uh, about milk, so they want to add milk to their coffee. Is it okay? Um, first thing I want to say to that, like, just you want to add milk to your coffee. Of, uh, just look at the label if for example you do uh, you like to have your latte in the morning and you use one cup of milk one cup of milk is like i think it's eight nine grams depending on the the if it's a skim milk like which we don't recommend at all but even if it's 3.25 percent i think it's still like eight nine grams of carbs i think it's 11. okay so one cup of whole milk is 11.7 grams mm. of carb 
net, by the way. Yeah. So better alternatives. alternatives. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is we're not putting a full cup. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I hope. Yeah. We're not putting a full cup. But unless you drink uh, lattes. If you uh, have a latte. Well, well, this, okay, so that's a yeah. good point. You probably should consider that lattes are not going to be the best mm. thing to drink. And I never drank lattes, so I don't really know the mm. pull of that, but that's probably going to be put down for a while. For a while. So I don't know what the difference is for that. But what I will say is that most people are probably not putting a, a cup. So you're putting probably two tablespoons and how much is that? So, oh, let's find out how much yeah. is two tablespoons. I mean, honestly, like, like sometimes I feel like what I want people to do is just do the exercise. Yeah. Just do the okay. exercise and see. So two tablespoons is 1.5 grams of carbs so the truth is could i put milk in my coffee yeah. sure i could if i'm willing but, to give up the 1.5 grams yeah. of carbs but you have to measure it this because oh, like yes. uh, one point uh two tablespoon 30 it's mils, not a lot it's not a lot two tablespoon of heavy cream which it would, would give you 0. 0.4 or 5 carbs is better for like on the keto but like if you like milk just make sure that you don't add like a half a cup for example. well what i'm going to say there is that and again i've never drank lattes but if i put two tablespoons of heavy cream isn't it going to give me a closer sensation to a latte than two tablespoons of milk, of milk? so there's a part of me that just wonders sometimes like am i just using milk because i'm buying milk for my family and that's what's in the house in that case i'm suggesting buy milk free, buy cream for you mm -hmm. right i know that i go through heavy cream like quite quickly it doesn't spoil because i'm putting it in every coffee that i make and i have at least at least a coffee a day yeah. so I, I i feel for this one the thing is can i use milk will it raise my insulin of course anything that has carbohydrates in it is going to raise your insulin is two tablespoons of milk going to raise your insulin more than 1.5 grams of carbs from lettuce probably not yeah. i don't think so so it's a question for you to think yeah. for yourself what is it that i'm doing Another question we have, do you worry about your calories being too low on keto, missing your missing your metabolism? Because like if okay. we often hear that, oh, keto works because it's a low calorie diet. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, first of all, it's not a low calorie diet. No. Uh, so it depends on what's happening. I've said a bunch of times, when I actually go into the calculator and look at the foods that I was eating during my weight loss period, it's funny how a lot of the days I was like 2,000-ish calories. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, there were a lot of days where I wasn't, right? It's kind of like it depends on what I was making, what I was eating, mm -hmm. like, right? But what I've noticed is that the more along the process I went and the closer and closer to my goal that i got the higher and higher the amount of food so the calorie count mm -hmm. was getting mm -hmm. and the question becomes well why and i feel like the answer is because as i got closer to my goal my body started taking less and less fat from me um and even though by the end i was still in a weight loss trajectory like it's funny how i was eating so much more so like in the beginning i'm not worried about people having too little calories because nobody's counting the mm -hmm. calories that we're taking from our own body we are um, metabolizing our own body fat, which is what causes the weight loss. You see in the past video, I've, I've been tracking, I, I returned to tracking last uh, 10 days now. And, and often I'm at 22, 2300, especially if I do two meals a day, I'm 22, 2300 uh, calories for my day. So no, it's not that low calorie. When you, when you eat the food, you should eat the good food. Like you had some cheese, you have some olives, uh, these, like cheese olives like heavy cream uh, the the fatty piece of meat some nuts like to like a reasonable amount uh, you can get to your uh, number of calories uh, pretty quickly but then again like i feel it's a team of the past videos go back to tracking if you're not sure like put in your numbers in a in a, in a phone app or on a web like a web app and check like and measure everything we'll see it's not a low like honestly, in the last ten days, it's been hard even to be under two thousand calories for my day. Were you without, trying to be? Without, no, 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 no. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be, but like without counting with you eating normally, but putting it in a uh, in my app. The other thing I'm going to say is that your body doesn't understand calories. Mm -hmm. We keep trying to force this idea on our body that it doesn't get. If I eat appropriately, my body will do whatever it needs to do for me to move forward in my day. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people. For example who are doing strict carnivore they're going seriously above the calorie count and they're fine right because especially i think one of the things that we don't understand is that if you are not poisoning your body with carbohydrates 
your body will take in what you're eating and do what it's supposed to do with the do. As soon as you add carbohydrates to that mix, of course, your body has to get those carbs where they're supposed to go, which means insulin got turned on very much, which means that so you have this chain reaction that happens that we need to understand that our body does certain things with certain things. It's a chain reaction. And that means that when when my hormones tell my body to do something, it affects everything. Next question is interesting. I have achieved my goal. Can I have a cheat day? No. <laughs> what are you answering that? <laughs> is that the whole question? Yeah, yeah. I just, I was just like interesting because we talked about cheat day uh, okay, not so, so long ago. But if you achieve your goal, well, whether you achieve your goal or but, you don't achieve your goal, having a cheat day is a bad idea. Am I saying you can't have one? Of course, I'm never gonna tell you what you can and cannot mm-hmm. do. You guys are making your own decisions. Would I advise you to have a cheat day? Is really the question I think you're trying to ask me, and the answer to that is no. Yeah. Multiple reasons, but the most important being. If I spent months trying to work on this painting, am I going to turn around after and rub it in the dirt? No. And as far as I'm concerned, carbohydrates is a big pile of dirt. Why would you rub your painting in it? Right? You just made a masterpiece. Keep it beautiful. Whatever your goal is, whether it was weight loss, even if we don't advise that, or or getting healthier, like a cheat day is working like uh, against that goal of course absolutely like, whatever goal is like you're going to go against that goal and you're like like what i said you're just like setting yourself up like to just get more so well are we, like are we talking about one cheat day per year okay what if we're talking about uh, one cheat day one cheat day per week things that like that thing can that could happen in that case it's just like you're who are you cheating keep... on yeah no seriously who are you cheating on one cheat day even per year who are you cheating on there's not a thing that i ever eat that i look at it as a cheat everything i do is a decision if i decide to have some nuts tomorrow that's file it file a decision and guess what i'm deciding i'm deciding to put my brain in that space where i know i'm going to be craving i'm deciding to raise my insulin because i know that's what's going to happen because i'm going to have one and then it's going to be five and then it's going to be 20 and it's going to be so I'm putting myself in a bad, who am I cheating? I'm not cheating anybody. I'm actively doing something against Violet. Let's call a spade a spade. It's not a cheat day. It's a day where I throw away all the work that I did in the previous how many months. Now, the second thing I'm going to put out there to you to think about, seven years. That cheat day is actually going to be affecting you for seven years. Not just today. Stop thinking about these things in this finite way. It's not finite. It's not just this minute. We need to understand that everything I do has repercussions that go on in front, like it it keeps moving out. So this is not, oh, even one cheat per per, per year. Who am I cheating, right? That's me putting a hole in my wall of my nicely built house every year. So think about that for a second. If you put a hole in the wall there and then a hole in the wall there and then a hole in the wall, do you think that after seven years, even if you're putting one hole everywhere, that maybe there might be some heating issues? Maybe what I would say, if you're still looking towards that cheat day or craving that cheat day, is maybe, you sh- like my point is, you shouldn't be craving a cheat day if you're doing everything properly. Like you shouldn't be craving the fries or the the the, the bread or like the, those things should just be out of your life and and, and you just like moved on. We so. crave what we have, mm. right? And when it comes to food, we crave what we allow ourselves to have. Mm. So if you're craving it, it's because you're still allowing it somewhere or another, mm. right? Or maybe you were just lucky, one of those people that got to the goal real fast. It's possible, right? I mean, I got up there after mm-hmm. five months. <laughs> Five months later, all those ideas were still in my head, right? I I understand that. If you got there after five months, it's like, yay, okay. But again, for me, the pain of my hip versus eating a a whatever it would have been, yeah, no. This one about artificial sweeteners. Do you add stevia or monk fruit to your coffee? No. And I haven't added stevia or monk fruit to my coffee probably since about eight months into doing this lifestyle because I think it was around that period of time that I started doing a little bit more research on what triggers insulin and I re- I learned about the cephalic response. Basically the cephalic response is that when you actually put sugar or anything sweet tasting in your mouth, it signals to your brain. So your brain is notified and right away your brain starts engaging insulin. And like, again, we don't understand how dangerous this toxin really is. As soon as it touches your mouth, your brain is already mobilizing your body to fight against it. 
it's that bad for us. So no, I stopped using Stevia. As a matter of fact, I've said this a bunch of times and I don't mind saying it again today. I haven't made any keto treat type things. I haven't had anything, not a cookie, not a, I haven't had any keto blah, blah, blahs in over a year because I started to realize, so the last holdout I had was nuts. And as you've learned, like even that started to get me. So I'm like, you know what? It's not worth it. The way that you end up feeling for this momentary, like how long does it last? 30 seconds, 40 seconds yeah. that you're like, mm, mm, mm. and then next thing you know, like you're, you're not feeling great. So I, I don't, I don't use them. I don't encourage them except as transitional. I understand as a transition yeah. between the real garbage and eating healthy, I, I do say, yes, use them as a transition. But as a long-term plan for the way I'm going to eat, we just had our anniversary. We didn't have anything sweet, right? We just had normal meals, mm -hmm. right? Well, nice meals, but normal meals, yeah. right? So it's like, I feel like it's important for us to start to realize is that, you know, last year on our anniversary, we did have something though. So yeah, it's been about a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's true. Like, and, maybe and that was the Christmas. last, and I think that was the last thing I had. No, last year at our anniversary was the last thing that I had actually. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a big a big fan of a lot of sugar in my coffee before, but I used to put like just one. Oh, I have one here, one the little packet, but like. And now we need to explain <laughs> I mean, why we have one there. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't need to explain. So you, you'll know soon it's, enough. You'll it's know. For, it's you'll, for music. You'll know <laughs> soon enough. But no, but but funny enough though, <laughs> and you're gonna laugh at that one. I used, to, but I think it was more because I like the the taste. But I used to think that. Either raw sugar or the brown sugar was healthier than white sugar <laughs> in the coffee. But right now, like just just get maybe get try to get used to just putting heavy cream in your coffee, and you're gonna save yourself like uh, the the reaction of your brain to uh, to the, the the sweetener. So I mean, honestly, I know there's a lot uh, just in the regular world, like nothing to do with keto. There's a lot of people <clears throat> that love black coffee. Mm -hmm. oh, I yeah, mean, yeah. I was never a fan, but I mean, it's it's Thank a thing. You. I just got one two seconds ago. Okay, next one from Sing It. So at some point, you cut down on the fat and your body did burn your own fat. That is unclear part. How much fat needs to be consumed daily to not block burning, burning your own? Basically, at what point you tap into your own fat? In order to tap yeah. into your own fat, you just need to eat less than your body needs. So, and I feel like, the, okay, so what's interesting for me, when I look back on my beginning of keto, I was unaware, unaware that taking the carbs out of my life meant I was taking away my main energy source mm -hmm. because I came to keto for my hip issues. When you take the carbs away, initially you're going to be hungry and you're probably going to add some fat. But what I would say seeing it is that if right now the situation that you're in is that I've been eating a ketogenic lifestyle long enough that I actually don't have the carbs there and I'm adding fat, stop adding the fat. So that's part one. Just don't add the fat. If you're not adding fat, but you feel like you're not losing, it could be that whatever you're eating is so high in fat that you're still having enough fat, right? So not to say that I want you to decrease your fat. What I actually want you to do is just eat to satiation. When you don't feel hungry anymore, that's what satiation means. Not that I feel full. Hmm. When I'm eating, I take my time. I mean, honestly, again, you can ask Pat, like we'll have similar amounts of food on the plate and he will finish and I'm still eating because I eat slowly <laughs> so that I can tell if I'm full or not full, if I'm satiated, because when I'm done, I'm done. Mm. Right now, what the positive that that gives you is that maybe you're going to start to realize that you were eating so fast that you were eating more than you needed. But the other thing is going to give you is that, of course, maybe the, the amount you need to remove isn't that much. Like maybe it's, maybe it's a few tablespoons per day or even half a cup per day, but that half a cup of fat is still half a cup of fat, right? Mm -hmm. So fat's very satiating and fat. So again, that little extra step of eating like this versus mm -hmm. eating, talking, da, 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 eating, yeah. talking, like that little difference could mean the difference between you eating five or six tablespoons less. Yeah. And if you do that every day, it counts, counts. So, so you end your comment, uh, singing by saying, but not eat. Uh, but not end up eat under eating calorically. If you eat to satiation, you're not like, uh, again, like we set, often set ourselves for those calorie goal when they're, they don't matter actually. So just like eat until you're, you're my favorite word. So eat <laughs> until you're satiated and it's going to be fine. Don't, don't add unnecessary fat, eat like your, your food, like, like 
the, the fat on your meat and, and like your veggies and if you have salad add your uh, full fat dressing and yeah you're gonna be fine so don't don't make calorie a goal just eat until you're you're not hungry anymore I, I like going through the comments I think we might try to do this once in a while because it gives me a chance I mean this was random we just kind of mm -hmm. scrolled up and saw what was there wellness warriors if you want to live a healthy ketogenic lifestyle there's some videos on the screen that are gonna help you to do this properly I want to thank you for watching mind-blowing health and wellness with Violet patch out edition love making these videos for you guys I really can't wait to talk to you again next week. I'll see you next week.